Hey guys, this is Hemant from Edureka. Welcome to this session on robotic process automation. Today in this session, we are going to learn about what is robotic process automation and why it is used. So without wasting any more time, let's move on to the agenda to see what all we'll be covering in today's session. So we'll start today's session by first discussing why do we need RPA and then move on to what it is exactly. After that, we are going to discuss a use case wherein we'll see how RPA is actually used in the industry. After that, we are going to look at the RPA tools which are used to implement the RPA technology. And towards the end, we'll be doing a small demo wherein you will get to see how RPA actually works. All right. So guys, this is our agenda for today. I hope it's clear to you. So let's start off with our session with the first topic of today's session, which is why do we need RPA? All right. So let's understand this topic using an example. So let's take the example of calculating numbers. So we used to pen down the calculation that we had to do and we used to do it. But as time progressed, we came up with complex calculations and it became very difficult for us to do them in a very short time, right? right? So the time increased and at the same time, the probability of committing errors also increased. Right? So this had to be solved. So in 1966, we came up with a brilliant invention, which was a calculator by Texas Instruments. So, right? so this calculator we automated the task of calculations. All right. So now all we had to do was feed the formulae that we wanted to calculate and we'll get the results in microseconds. All right. So that's how fast the calculator is. Now we as humans, we like to crib and we said, okay, but we still need to feed the, these numbers, right? And it's still a manual work. We still have to feed these numbers and then only we'll get the results. So it's because of this thought came RPA. Now, what is the difference between automation and RPA? Let's give a quick look. So automation was basically where you automated the task of calculating by the use of calculator by inventing a technology. But what is RPA? RPA is basically applying a layer of uh, robotics on top of the invention that you have calculated, right? So there is no human involvement in RPA anymore. So if you look at it closely, if you look at the figure very closely, you will understand that the technology, the underlying technology didn't change, right? The calculator is still a calculator, but the task of entering the numbers on the calculator became automated, all right? So RPA basically remains, uh, replaces humans, right? So these numbers can be put inside the calculator without any human intervention and the bots can mimic the humans exactly as they are told to. Now this is the power of RPA guys. Now you'll be understanding what I exactly mean when you'll see RPA in real demo, but for that, let's be patient for this session and it'll be clear to you towards the end of the session. So let's move ahead now and understand what it is exactly. What is RPA? So RPA is an acronym, acronym for robotic process automation. So let's understand these three words one by one. What is robotic? So any entity which can be programmed to mimic the human actions, is known as robotic then comes process so any sequence of steps that can lead to a meaningful activity is known as a process so it could be the process of making tea wherein you just pour some boiling water then tea leaves and then milk so these three steps contribute towards making of tea all right so it becomes a process then comes automation so automation basically means without human intervention so whenever you're doing a process without human interventions and it is done by computers, which are just mimicking human actions, it is known as robotic process automation. To, so, so to summarize this, mimicking human behavior to execute a sequence of steps without human intervention is what RPA is all about, right? So that is robotic process automation. Now moving on, let's, let's understand how RPA is actually used in the industry. All right. So, uh, let's take the example of a data entry employee. All right. So a data entry employee's main task is to get data from various sources and aggregate them inside one Excel file. All right. So this is the task that he does every day and every task that given to him is contributes to these steps that have to be done. So when these had to be done, th this could be solved using RPA. Now, how could it be solved? So if we told the computer to do these same steps one by one and then put them inside an Excel file, it became automated, all right? And this is possible 
using RPA, not using code, not using uh, some advanced algorithms. It is possible by a simple drag and drop. This is how simple it is. And this can be uh, done and I can show you guys how it is done today in the UiPath tool that I'm, uh, that is the tool that we'll be using uh, for the hands-on today. Now moving on guys, now we discussed that what is RPA, we discussed how it is actually implemented in the industry. Let's see what are the advantages of RPA, why are people searching for RPA these days, alright. So businesses require RPA because of reduced costs because as you saw in the use case, you replaced a complete human, right. So you don't require that salaried employee anymore that th those tasks can be done by RPA now. So you have reduced the costs, you have improved the accuracy because humans are tend to make errors, right? And machines, they don't make errors guys. They are, do exactly as they are told to. So it, it has improved accuracy. There are no downtimes because it is 24 seven up and running. So they don't work in shifts. It will not be like it will work for eight hours and then shut down. It's not like that. It can work 24 seven and hence no downtime. And towards the end, like I said, there is no code required to implement RPA. All right. It's, it's a simple drag and drop and you can do any kind of task inside RPA, which a human would have done. All right. So that's how powerful RPA is. Now, why do you believe me? Let's, let's look at some facts that experts have to say that they will replace the humans. Right, so this is a McKinsey research which, which was conducted uh, last year, which says it will uh, RPA will have an impact of five to seven trillion dollars by the year 2025. All right, so as you can see, there's a huge market for RPA in the world right now, and by the year 2025, which are just eight years down the line, it will have an impact of five to seven trillion dollars. After that, uh, there was one more statement that came out from McKinsey that it will touch more than 230 million knowledge workers. That is nine percent of the global workforce that is there. That does not mean that 230 million workers will lose their jobs. That basically mean uh, means that 230 million knowledge workers might. Uh, get a change in their job profile. So the kind of work that you're doing today might get changed to something else because that work will be replaced by RPA and you might be required somewhere else to do some other task. So this is this is where RPA is going to lead us guys because everything is going to change in a couple of years. Now this RPA technology guys, uh, it's, it's a technology, right? It is implemented using some tools. All right. And these tools are available in the market. You can buy them and you can actually work on them. So like, let, let's look at these tools which are there. So the leading three tools which are there in RPA are UiPath, then you have Blue Prism and then you have Automation Anywhere. All right. Now these, there are many tools which implement the RPA technology, but these three tools are the top tools which are out there right now. Now, what is the difference between these three is this that if you were to learn RPA, if you are a person who wants to learn RPA, you cannot do that using Blue Prism because Blue Prism guys, they don't know, they don't give any trial version for you to practice on. They are strictly for enterprises and even the trial versions that are there for Blue Prism, you will not find them on the internet. You have to request the company and if the company feels that you are the, you are a prospect buyer, they might give you the software. Then comes automation anywhere. So automation any anywhere again, guys, there is no proper defined trial version for automation anywhere. You do get a 30 day trial version. If you search a bit on the Google, uh, on Google, right? But, uh, there is no defined trial version from for automation anywhere. Uh, but the case with UiPath is different. UiPath guys have been very generous for this. They, these guys, they give you a, a community edition that basically means a free tool to practice on as long as you want. So you can go on their website and download the UiPath tool and get on with RPA. All right. So uh, UiPath is a savior in our case. So today in, in our session, I'll be using UiPath because I know you, if you guys want to practice, you would be practicing on UiPath. So we'll be using the UiPath tool and be going ahead from today's session. So let me tell you quickly how you can install the UiPath tool. So first you have to go to this following link, which is uipath.com slash community. All right. You go to this link and then you will get the screen on the screen. You have to click on get community edition. Once you click there, you will get this screen where you have to fill in a registration form where you have to give your name, your email address, and that is it. 
right so once you do that you will click on request community edition and once you click on request community edition you will reach this page which basically thanks you for your request and then you your download will uh, start automatically and if it doesn't you can click on download it here and it will download your file once it downloads uh, your file you will double click it and you will get the screen so this is the initialization uh, screen for UiPath. So there is no wizard which is there, which will, uh, I mean, the, the general setup uh, use case where you press next and then you reach the end screen and press finish. That It's not like that. You will see the screen and after a few moments, you, UiPath will be installed on your computer. And the next step would be to enter the details as you enter on the registration page. All right, so this basically activates your RPA tool as the community edition version. So you, you will enter the same email address that you got that you entered in the registration page and click on activate and then your UiPath tool will be uh, successfully installed. You will get this acknowledgement screen after that and you can be assured that your UiPath tool is ready to use. All right guys, so this was it. This was the process of installing UiPath. Now let me quickly go to my tool and let, let us start working with UiPath now. All right, so I'll, I'll be quickly doing a demonstration for you guys. So what we'll be doing is I'll show you how you can configure UiPath to work exactly as you want. So let me go to my UiPath tool. All right, so once you open your UiPath tool, this is the screen that you see guys, right? So once you have seen your screen, all you have to do is click on blank. So once you click on blank, you will be presented with the screen. Right, so you have to create a new project in UiPath. Right, so to create a new project, you will type in the name of that project, which is this. Right, and hit create. All right, so once you hit create, a new project will be created for you, and this is the workspace where you'll be designing your project. Now, what is the use case that I'm trying to design for you? Is this. So I, what I'll be doing is I will be going to Edureka website, which is like this. I will type in google.com on my Chrome browser. All right, so this is the screen that I'll be reaching. Once I come on Google, I will type in Edureka and hit enter. Then I will click on this particular link. And once I've clicked over there, I will reach this page, which is my Edureka home screen. And now I will click here in the search box and type in IP RPA, hit enter. I'll reach the search results page. I will click on the RPA automation course and I'll be able to come to my course. All right, so these are the steps that I want, that I want to do in my UiPath tool. So let's see how we can do that, how we can configure our UiPath tool, to do all of this in uh, say three, four seconds. All right, so the first thing that you have to do is go inside the activities pane, which is here on the left side, type in sequence. I'll type it again for you, right? And hit enter. So once you hit enter, you will get this activity, which is basically the search result. You will drag and drop this activity over here, All right? So you have got a sequence now. Now the next step that you have to do, if you think it logically is to open a browser, right? So you, all you have to do is search over here, open browser, you will get this activity, drag and drop this activity over here and you're done. Now you have to specify a URL where you want your browser to browse to, right? So let's specify the URL as www.google.com. Now any string that you enter in UiPath guys has to be, uh, has to be there inside quotes, right? So you'll put it inside quotes and you're done. Right, so it will go to www.google.com. Now, what next? Next, I have to uh, like I have to write it, write something inside the search bar, right? So over here, I have to write something. So for that, the com for telling computer that that go inside the search box, I have to write type into. I have to search for an activity called type into. Right, so this is the type into activity. I'll drag and drop it over here, and done. Right, so now I'll have to indicate where that uh, typing has to take place. So I click on indicate element inside browser. I'll specify over here that I, I want to type something and it takes the screenshot of it and understands, okay, I have to type there. Now, what do I want to type? I want to type in Edureka. 
right so once i type eduraker i will hit enter all right so for hitting enter you again have to go into your activities and search for hotkeys right so you have an activity called send hotkey you can search send and you'll get the activity over here drag and drop it over here and that is it all right now you have to specify which key you want to enter once you have entered your text so i want to send the enter key so let me specify it here and you have to specify where you want to send the enter key so let me specify it again here all right so once it has entered at eureka it will come to this activity which basically will hit enter all right cool so once i've done that uh, let's see what will happen so i'll enter at eureka i'll hit enter i will reach this page now i'll have to click on this particular link so let me tell my rpa tool that i have to click on this link so i'll go here i will type in an activity called click all right let me drag and drop the click activity over here now i'll have to tell my rpa tool that what to click all right so let me click on indicate element inside browser and i want to click this link so let me click on this link now and the computer understands it that i have to click on that link once i've done all these steps that were done before all right so once i have clicked on this link i have to go to my edureka website all right and the cool thing guys about rpa is it will wait until all your web elements are loaded onto the page all right so sometimes it happens that your internet is slow so you don't have to worry about that rpa has this built in feature or ui path has this built in feature wherein it will wait until all your web page components are loaded and only then it will deploy the robot onto it to do the things all right so now what i want to do is i want to type in for a course right so all first i have to click here right to type something so i'll have to include an activity which clicks so let me put in an element for click and let me indicate the element where i want to click in so this is the element all right so now it will click on the search bar and now i have to type there something right so i have to search again for an activity called type into let me copy it here and drag all right and let me specify where where do i want to type so let me specify i want to type here and what is the thing that i want to type i want to type rpa right so let me give the search term which is rpa and that is it now what i'll do is what i'll just hit enter all right so again i have to send an hotkey so i'll search for hotkey and drag and drop it here indicate where i want to send the hotkey which is here and specify the key as enter all right sound simple till now right now it will go here it will type in rpa and it will hit enter all right so now it will reach the screen so now it has to click on this particular element so let me specify that as well so let me search for an activity called click all right drag and drop it here indicate the element inside browser which is this and it will click the element for you right so all is done guys nothing else has to be configured uh, now all you can do right now is specify what kind of browser you want to open all right so you'll go to your open browser activity and inside the open browser activity you will see there's a properties pane on the right side so over here it is asking us what is the browser type so if by default it's ie you can change it to whatever browser you want i'll change it to chrome all right and that is it so let's run this uh, sequence or our project and see if it goes on well so i'll hit on run now it will initialize the process if it has gone to google it is typed in edureka hit enter it will go to the edureka link right now the page is loading page loaded enter rpa got into the course page clicked on the rpa course and it's done so once the process has been completed it will again come back to your ui path tool but if you go back and see the uh, browser you can see i've reached my ui path page automatically that is that my computer browsed to this page all right so this is they they mimic exactly 
what you would have done on your computer and that is why it is so powerful so this was a very simple exercise guys now imagine what you do every day on a computer can be configured inside your UiPath tool all right so it can go anywhere it can do anything that you guys are doing on your computer every day all right so this is how powerful your RPA is all right so with that guys I will end today's session so this was an introductory session I hope you like this session guys so thank you guys for attending today's session I hope you learned something new today and please practice what we did today if you are interested in RPA and goodbye have a good day ahead